Welcome to an application of a complex fraction. We want to find the total resistance to the given parallel circuit, where the total resistance of a parallel circuit refers to the opposition to the current flow from the power source. And there are two formulas that we can use to find the total resistance. The formulas are equivalent, just in different form. Looking at this first formula, we have one divided by the total resistance, or R sub t, or we can say the reciprocal of R sub t is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of each individual resistance in the system. But we're going to use this second formula. We're looking at the right side. We have a complex fraction because we have fractions within fractions. The total resistance, R sub t, is equal to one divided by the sum of the reciprocals of each individual resistance in the system. So notice that R sub one is equal to 20 ohms, R sub two is equal to 30 ohms, R sub three is equal to 10 ohms, and R sub four is equal to 150 ohms. Which means the total resistance, R sub t, is going to be equal to a fraction where the numerator is one and the denominator is the sum of the reciprocals of R sub one, R sub two, R sub three, and in our case, R sub four. Since R sub one is equal to 20 ohms, our first fraction would be 1 20th plus one over R sub two, or the reciprocal of R sub two, which would be 1 30th plus one over R sub three, or the reciprocal of R sub three, that would be 1 10th, and then finally plus the reciprocal of R sub four, or one over R sub four, which would be one over 150. Now we want to simplify this, so for our first step, we'll add these fractions here by obtaining a common denominator. Let's go ahead and simplify this on the next slide. The least common denominator will be the least common multiple of 20, 30, 10, and 150, which will be the smallest number that's divisible by all four of these denominators. Well, 150 is both a multiple of 10 and 30, so let's see if we can find the least common multiple of 150 and 20. Well, 150 is not a multiple of 20, so the next multiple of 150 would be 300, and notice that 300 is a multiple of 10, 30, and 20, and 300 is the least common multiple of our denominators, and therefore is the least common denominator. So we want all these denominators to be 300, so for one over 150, we'd multiply by two over two. For one over 10, we'd multiply by 30 over 30. For a 1 30th, we'd multiply by 10 over 10. And for 1 20th, we'd multiply by 15 over 15. Notice now, all of our denominators are 300. So we'd have R sub t equals one divided by a single fraction with a denominator of 300, and the numerator would be 15 plus 10 plus 30 plus 2. So we'd have one divided by, this would be 25, 55, 57, 57 over 300. So the total resistance is equal to the reciprocal of 57 three hundredths, or 350 sevenths. And this would be ohms. But we can also think of this as one divided by 57 three hundredths, if this helps. And dividing by 57 three hundredths is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal giving us the same result, 357 ohms. But this is an improper fraction because the numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. Let's also express this as a mixed number. To find the mixed number, we would divide 300 by 57. And there are five 57s in 300. Five times fifty-seven would be, five times seven is thirty-five. Carry the three to the tens place value. Five times five is twenty-five plus three is twenty-eight. Now we subtract, the remainder is fifteen. So we can say the total resistance is equal to five 
and 15 57 ohms. But let's also express this as a decimal, and let's say we're asked to round to two decimal places, or the hundredths place value. Because this would be an approximation, we'll use the approximation symbol here, and now we'll convert 15 57 to a fraction to find the decimal part here, or we could also express the improper fraction as a decimal. Let's show both. So for 15 divided by 57, if we round to the hundredths place value, this would be approximately 0 0.26. Remember, we already have a whole number of five, so this would be approximately 5.26 ohms. If we use the improper fraction, we would not have to remember to include the five. 300 divided by 57 would give us, again, 5.26 ohms. I do want to emphasize that we should not round unless we're told to. We should always give the exact value, which again would be either 357 ohms or 5 and 15 57 ohms. But if we were to round to the hundredths place value, it would be approximately 5.26 ohms. I hope you found this explanation helpful.